Hello and welcome to this Top Down Engine tutorial. I'm Renaud from More Mountains and today we're going to talk about weapons. So the Top Down Engine includes a generic weapon system that allows you to pick up weapons, uh, use them of course, have the uh, ammo count reduced, you know, so you can manage magazines and reload and all that stuff. And with it you can uh, create projectile based weapons, melee or whatever you can think of, switch to another weapon and so on. The engine also includes a, a few examples of weapons that you can have a look at, uh, such as all the ones in the Koala demo scene, but also the Loft 3D demo scenes and a few other ones. And you can use that as a basis to create your own. In the previous tutorial that focused on animation, I showed how to create a meta weapon in 3D. In this tutorial, I'm gonna focus on creating a 2D weapon for this Koala character that shoots projectiles. So the first thing we want to do is exit play mode and start creating our weapon. To start creating my weapon, the first thing I want to do is grab my Koala 2D character. So uh, he would be in Prefab's playable character and I'm going to go and drop him into my scene. And I'm going to use that as a reference for the sizing and positioning of the weapon. So next, uh, I want to create an empty object and I'm going to call it tutorial gun. And that is going to be the basis for my gun. I'm going to go and add a weapon, actually a projectile weapon uh, component to it. And I'm also uh, going to have a weapon aim 2D component on it that is going to allow me to aim my weapon. Uh, just to position it correctly, I'm going to nest it into that weapon attachment slot and position it at zero. Now, I want my weapon to uh, to be seen just like the, uh, the AK over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my game folder and I prepared um, a sprite for it. So I'm going to drag my sprite and put it into my tutorial gun and I'm going to put it at zero like that. Uh, I'm going to set its sorting layer to characters and I'm going to adjust its position. I would like it to be somewhere like that when aiming to the right. Um, next thing I want to do is uh, I, I'm going to call that tutorial gun model or something like that. Now the next thing I want to do is make a prefab out of this weapon. So I'm going to go and click on my tutorial gun here and drag it into my project view here. And now I can remove it safely from my Koala character and I can actually disable my Koala character from here. Uh, I may reuse it again later. So now if I go into my Koala 2D project part, select my Koala uh, prefab. Here you can see I have a character handle weapon component and that component is responsible for, as the name implies, uh, handling weapons. It is the component that will make sure, you know, that when you press the trigger, something actually happens. It connects your character with its weapon. Uh, from its inspector, you will be able to optionally select a weapon to start with. And that's what we are going to do right here. So I'm going to go and grab my tutorial gun and put it in, into its initial weapon slot. That guarantees that when the character gets instantiated into the scene, it equips automatically this weapon. Uh, this component will also let you specify a weapon attachment. So uh, in this case on the Koala prefab, uh, you can see we have a weapon attachment right here into its model. And that's just a transform that lets you say, okay, when I attach a weapon to my character, it gets attached to this plus an offset that you can specify. Um, and it, it will also be responsible for changing the weapon. And generally, that's your connection to the weapon. Now I'm going to select my prefab again. And on its weapon aim component, I'm going to set its aim control to mouse 
I could have it to primary movement, in which case uh, the weapon would point at any direction I'm walking to. Secondary movement, that would be the secondary joystick by default. Uh, the mouse or uh, script, and you, you could do that for AI, for example, or have a custom script that automatically aims maybe at the closest enemy or stuff like that. I'm gonna go with mouse. I'm gonna set its weapon rotation speed to zero. That would be instant. Uh, but you could have a delay as well. Uh, you can define here the rotation mode. I'm going to go with free, so that's free, uh, 360 degrees rotation, but you could have strict 2D ro two rotation, so that would be left and right, four directions, uh, north, east, west, south, and eight direction with diagonals. I can also decide that I want a reticle. Uh, I'm not bothered with that for now, but I'll show you maybe later. So if I press play, You'll see that I can move my character around and I, as I move my mouse, uh, it, it moves. But of course, if I try to click and shoot, uh, nothing happens and actually I get errors because uh, we don't have an object puller for our projectile weapon. So that's what we are going to fix. To be able to shoot, the projectile weapons in the Korg engine uses object pools. So that recycles your projectiles and makes sure your performance remains decent. Um, so I'm going to need to create a projectile. So to do so, I'm going to create an empty object and name it uh, tutorial projectile. And under it, I'm going to drag my tutorial projectile sprite, which is, uh, so this is here. I'm going to make sure this is at zero and I want the sorting layer for this to be correct so I can see my projectile. There we go. Next, I'm going to go and add a projectile script to it uh, and also uh, maybe a circle collider 2D would be nice. I could spend hours uh, adjusting this thing but uh, I'm gonna go and say this is okay. I want my, my bounce based on my collider 2D so uh, you could also have your bounce based on the renderer size or uh, you know you don't want them undefined but Collider or Collider 2D or Renderer are what you want to go with. I'm going to say its lifetime maximum is like five seconds. Uh, considering the size of the level and the sight lines, five seconds is more likely to be uh, uh, never met, but still. Uh, I want that uh, project I to face its direction. I want its speed to be maybe 50 uh, with an acceleration of two. And uh, I'm not going to change anything else. I'm going to go also and add a damage on touch component to it and that is going to uh, handle damage when that uh, projectile hits stuff. So I want it to be able to hit uh, enemies. So I select enemies on my target layer mask. Uh, if I wanted to also apply damage to obstacles, I would you know, check obstacles as well. Uh, I won't click perfect impact, that's more for 3D projectiles that go really fast speed. I'm gonna say it causes 10 damage, uh, that's some knockback, like so, and has an invisibility duration of 0.5, that's just fine. And it also takes damage, so maybe uh, it takes 10 damage every time. And to handle damage, I'm gonna add a health component to it. And I'm gonna say this projectile has a health of 10. So anytime it takes damage, like uh, um, it takes 10 damage, it's gonna lose its health and sort of die. There are a few more components I wanna add. Uh, the first one will be a rigid body 2D. And this will ensure that our collisions work fine. So I'm gonna make it kinematic. And I'm gonna say um, that I don't want it to ever sleep. And I can set the interpolation to interpolate, for example. Um, next, I want to have a prevent passing through 2D. And this is a mechanism that will make sure that we never go through an obstacle without colliding with it. Uh, I'm not gonna say I want to collide with obstacles and enemies. I want to make sure you know I never go through any of these. And uh, the last component I need is an MM pullable object, and that will let the system know that it can recycle this 
thing. I want the bounce based on the Collider 2D and the lifetime to be five seconds like before. Now I can uh, drag my tutorial project out here to make it a prefab. Um, is everything okay? Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm gonna change the knockback to maybe 300 like that. Apart from that, it looks fine. Oh yeah, forgot to uh, I forgot to set the health model. So I'm gonna go back here and say um, on health the model for my project I is actually this thing, and then I'm gonna apply the changes. I think it should work now. Um, on my gun, I'm gonna have. Also, a simple object puller, and this simple object puller will uh, be basically my magazine, uh, not the actual magazine of the weapon, but like a, a reserve where I put all the projectiles I'm about to shoot, and they recycled. They are they get recycled, and that way I don't have like tons of objects instantiated in the scene at once. Um, so I'm going to drag my tutorial projectile into my game object pool field. I could say uh, mutualize waiting pools uh, if I had many characters using that same weapon. That way, anytime someone tries to shoot, the weapon would request a uh, projectile from the pool, the common pool, and use it. And I'm going to say, uh, you know, I have a pool size of 20 and that pool can expand. If I press play now, You can see we don't have errors anymore and when I click I have projectiles that get shot. It is a bit weird right now because my projectiles get shot from like the center of my koala and they actually push my koala around so that's not what we want. We would like them to uh, start from the, the top of the cannon or something. To fix that, I'm going to select my projectile again and um, on, actually no, I'm going to select my weapon and on my weapon, on my projectile weapon component at the bottom of it, I have a spawn part and I'm going to say I want the projectile spawn offset to be free. So now if I press play again, when I shoot it is more or less at the right place, I could I guess also uh, offset a bit the, uh, the thing. So I'm gonna go and select my weapon. And as you can see, I have a nice gizmo here that lets me uh, tweak it. So if I change the Y value, I can adjust it pretty smoothly. Uh, I'm gonna go maybe with 2.8 and 0 0.2, 0 0.15. Uh, I could go on for hours like that. Uh, I can also define the projectiles per shot. So maybe I go with three projectiles and I want them to spread. Uh, is it the is it the way axis? We'll see. Uh, let's press play again. Wasn't the way axis. It was the z axis, I think. Let's say 10 on the z-axis. Press play again. Yes. Okay, so now I'm shooting three projectiles and as they go, you can see them spreading. I'm gonna go back to one projectile uh, for the sake of clarity, but um, you get the idea now. So I'm gonna revert that to zero and one. You could decide also to have uh, a random spread or a very aligned spread, so it's a, it puts a lot of uh, freedom. Rotate weapon on spread is um, a good example. Is the uh, Kola AK where it's basically spreading every shot, so uh, it's only shooting one projectile, but uh, randomly picking a, a sort of position, and that also helps with um, uh, like the feeling of the gun. 
Now you may have noticed that our projectiles are going through walls and that's not what we want. So I'm going to select my projectile again and make a few more changes. The first one is I want to make sure my layer is projectile. And yes, I want that to change on children. I want to make sure my collider is indeed a trigger. I want my target layer mask to include my walls. So uh, they are on the obstacles layer. So I'm going to add that one. Uh, we do indeed take 10 damage every time. So every time we collide with anything, uh, we apply 10 damage and that brings our health to zero, so that's fine. We could also shoot at other projectiles, so that's why there's this whole system in place. And I think that should be it. Uh, I'm also gonna increase the speed because they are like super slow right now, so I'm gonna increase to 200. And I'm gonna press play again. And now when I shoot, uh, you can see that my projectiles get destroyed when they hit a wall and they can kill enemies as well. So we now have uh, maybe a very bare bones in terms of visuals, but at least it is shooting and working. Now let's try to improve the visual quality of all that uh, because right now it is very lacking. Uh, we just have projectiles that, that randomly disappear and that doesn't look really good. So uh, to do so, I'm going to drag my uh, tutorial projectile in the scene again. And I am also going to cheat a bit and uh, take a shortcut by grabbing a projectile from the Koala uh, demo, like the gun bullet maybe, and I'm going to grab a few stuff from it. So it contains, as you can see, quite a few things. So we have the top level, which is the logic level. We just rebuilt pretty much exactly the same thing. We have our pullable object, we have our projectile, our health, damage on touch, we prevent it from passing through stuff, a collider and a rigid body. So all that we just covered. Uh, we also have a smoke trail. So when it moves, you see it emits these sort of uh, nice particles. We have the bullet itself, uh, which is just a sprite. We have a bullet impact and that is our particle effect looking good. And we have feedback. So we have a feedback when we hit something that is damageable. And uh, we have another one when we hit something that is non-damageable. So I'm going to go and grab this object and put it next to my bullet so uh, I can work with it. Of course, you could create new effects uh, just to speed things up. I'm going to reuse what I have here. So I'm going to go and uh, copy my smoke trail, paste it into my tutorial projectile, make sure it's at zero. And I'm going to maybe change a bit the color of this thing uh, so that it sort of matches what I have in mind for this blue one. I'm also going to copy the bullet impact and paste it here like so. Uh, same thing, I want to make sure it's at the center and when it explodes, it explodes, but right now it is exploding into uh, uh, a very yellow color and I want to make that a bit different. So I'm going to go and uh, change maybe the material that this thing is using because I think it's, uh, it's using a material that is very yellow. I'm going to duplicate that material, I'm going to go and drag it into my game folder like that and I'm going to change its color to something more bluish like this and I'm going to make it pop I don't know like this maybe then I'm going to go and select my bullet impact again renderer here so uh, on this one I'm going to go and say use this material and I'm going to rename it to uh, tutorial projectile material and the side particles back they are using black so now if I play my bullet impact again I have something that matches much more uh, my blue particle my blue projectile sorry uh, I could change the shape of it uh, maybe I don't know what happens if I do that nothing I could change the lifetime to maybe 0.4 so now they yeah you know if I change the right particles it may have an impact 
um, 0.5. All right, so now I have a bigger explosion. I'm gonna change the shape to, what happens if I do a box? It is ugly. Uh, what happens if I change that? Yeah, nope, not very convincing. I think I'm gonna go back to a circle. I like it like that. And so now I have my bullet impact, I have my smoke trail, uh, I'm gonna need a feedback. I can now get rid of my koala gun bullet, I'm not gonna use it anymore. And um, now what I wanna do is every time my projectile hits a wall, I want to have my bullet impact play. And to do that, I'm gonna use the feedback system. So I'm gonna create an empty game object. I'm gonna call that uh, damage feedback. And I'm gonna add what is certainly my favorite piece of code, so the MM feedback system. And what this does is it lets you on demand play a number of things. So you could have a Cinemachine impulse, you could have a chromatic aberration trigger, you could have a camera shake, you could have some light play. Uh, in all case, we want, uh, first of all, we want uh, particles to play. And this system uh, is built in the engine. Uh, you can use it with pretty much every ability, every weapon, every everything and I encourage you to do so because it's really a lot of fun to play with. So uh, in this case I want a particle to play so I'm, I'm just going to drag my uh, bullet impact into this and so every time this feedback gets triggered it's going to play these particles and now I need to uh, to tell my system that every time it takes uh, it hits something uh, I wanted to play that feedback like that. Um, the last thing I want to make sure I change is the delay before destruction. So um, otherwise that feedback will be disabled instantly. So I'm going to say maybe 1.5 seconds. I'm going to apply all these changes, disable my projectile, press play. And now when I shoot at stuff, you can see that I get this nice explosion, which already feels a bit better, and we're gonna make it even better. So now I suggest we turn things up to 11 by adding a bit more feedbacks. So we're gonna go back into our prefab, select our damage feedback, and we're gonna add, uh, first of all, we're gonna add a screen shake because that makes everything better. Uh, we're gonna leave, I think, everything by default. That should be fine. Uh, we're gonna also add freeze frame so every time it hits uh, we get a nice freeze frame and what else we could have we could have something else like a flash so a flash is gonna um, have an impact on a flash GUI component that we have and it's gonna turn this the screen to white uh, I'm gonna turn it to point one so that it doesn't flash too bright but we're gonna make it blue so it looks like it's related to our projectile. And that should be uh, a good start. We could also add a sound. I'm not gonna do it just to not mess with the recording, but uh, there's a lot you can do. We can also, yeah, maybe some post-processing. Um, chromatic aberration is always fun. Uh, let's go with it. And also maybe some, um yeah chromatic aberration no i went with that one that's not the one i was going for uh lens distortion yeah that should that should do it so now if i press play again you can see that every time i shoot i get some screen shake i get lens distortion i get something that is much more you know, uh, memorable. And it stacks up nicely. So yeah, that's how you add power to your projectiles. In a very similar way, we can add a muzzle flash to our, to our gun. Uh, I'm gonna cheat again, I think, and just put my, 
I'm gonna clean up this scene. I'm gonna put my tutorial gun in my scene. I'm gonna go and find my Koala 2D, uh, my Koala gun. And inside the gun, you can see that I have a weapon used feedback. So every time uh, the weapon gets used, it triggers all that stuff, uh, including this muzzle flare feedback that does, you know, uh, some sort of muzzle flash, but also spawns some sort of uh, shell. And I'm just going to copy that one, put it into my tutorial gun like this, adjust its position. I think it could be a bit more like that. Nice. Uh, I'm going to change the color of the particles to something more bluish. This has pretty much zero impact because it's not the right material again. So I'm going to go into game right here and say use this one instead. And probably the same thing for my renderer right here. Here we go. And I could also change, I guess, the color of the shell. Um, will that work? I have no idea. Mm, I think I've already got some blue ones. I think it's these ones. Yep. Okay, so nice, nice reuse here. And uh, the last thing I want to do is, of course, create a feedback that triggers all that. So I'm going to create an empty one, uh, call it shoot feedback. And same as before, I want to add an MM feedbacks component to it. I want to make sure that every time this feedback is triggered, it plays my particles. So that would be muzzle flare right here. I want to make sure that every time I shoot, I have a shoot feedback. So I'm going to drag that into my used MM feedback right here, my slot on my gun. Uh, what else was I doing on this one? I was doing Bloom. Uh, yeah, Bloom, Bloom is a nice idea. Bloom and maybe a flash, a bigger one this time. So I'm going to go with a post process Bloom. Uh, make sure it's not too long. That seems nice. Uh, I'm going to maybe turn the amplitude up a bit so you notice it. And I'm going to go with some sort of uh, camera flash. Make it blue. And set the alpha to 0.5 maybe. That should be noticeable. I'm going to remove that koala gun from the scene. I'm going to apply my changes to my tutorial gun. Disable it, press play. And now when I shoot, I get a blue flash, I get my muzzle flash, and I get my impact. So I would say this is starting to be a weapon that is enjoyable. It is definitely way too much uh, lens distortion on impact, but I'm just going to leave it like that because I can so now that we have a functioning weapon uh, that looks actually good, we're going to try and turn it into an ammo based weapon. So the first thing I want to do is uh, remove from my playable Koala. I want to make sure that it doesn't have an initial weapon anymore. So it starts um, without any weapon unarmed and we'll need to make a picker for it, just like for this AK and we'll need to make an ammo picker as well so it can shoot. So to create our ammo based weapon, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, bring my tutorial gun back in and I'm going to add a weapon ammo component to it. I want to make sure that uh, it matches my inventory name. So that would be Koala main inventory. And I'm going to say, okay, you'll find ammo into this inventory. And we're going to come back to it for uh, the ammo ID. And I'm going to rename that tutorial gun ammo based. 
create a prefab out of it and I'm gonna make it a, a variant. Now, um, we're gonna disable that for now. Next, we're gonna need a picker and we're gonna need an ammo picker. So I'm gonna copy these two and I'm gonna paste them and I'm gonna move them over there. I prepared some um, sprites for it. So instead of it being a, a rifle, it's gonna be a nice T for tutorial and same thing for the ammo. I prepared a sprite that looks like this. So now they look good, but they, if I if I were to pick them, uh, they will still give me a rifle and they will still give me uh, rifle ammo. So I'm gonna go here and here I have my Corella rifle and Corella rifle ammo uh, scriptable objects. And these are what define, you know, that that is what is stored into the inventory system. Uh, by the way, the inventory system is the inventory engine. Uh, it's a separate asset usually, but it is being uh, provided as a gift to top-down engine users. It is built into the system. If you want to know more about it and uh, learn more about how to create items and how they work, uh, there is a complete documentation for it, complete video tutorials as well, so uh, don't hesitate to check them out. Um, I just duplicated these two items so I can sort of uh, reuse them and I'm gonna move them into my game folder. Uh, I also want to create a folder called resources and the name is super important like don't try anything else it won't work uh, so you put them always your scriptable objects always in a resources folder so that unity can pick them up um, and i'm gonna re rename that into tutorial gun and tutorial tutorial ammo and i want to make sure that my item id for both items matches my file name that is critical all right so uh, i'm gonna go through each field so this is a weapon it is equipable uh, its name is not normal assault rifle but tutorial gun uh, its short description will be uh, this is the gun from the tutorial and here we would have a long description for it. We can move the object, we can swap it. Uh, I didn't create an icon, but that's where you would put yours. Uh, we're gonna need a prefab for it, so let's actually create these. So to do so, I can grab my Koala rifle picker and actually, no, I'm, I'm gonna unpack these and rename them into tutorial gun picker and tutorial ammo picker. I want the tutorial gun picker to give me a tutorial gun and I want my tutorial ammo picker to give me tutorial ammo. Uh, these are fine. So now I can make prefabs out of these. Same for the ammo picker. And if I go back into my item, I can now say that when I drop my gun from my inventory, I want to drop an actual gun picker prefab. It is a weapon. Uh, it should go into the Koala weapon inventory if possible. And uh, on equip, it should give me a tutorial gun ammo based variant. Now I'm gonna go into my tutorial ammo and do the same thing. So this is a tutorial ammo, not whatever this was. Uh, this is the ammo from the tutorial. Long description would go here. I can move the object, I can swap it. Uh, same thing, I didn't create an icon for it, but you would put it here. Uh, when it gets dropped, it drops um, tutorial gun. I'm a picker, this one. And I think everything is fine. Apart from that, that seems all right. 
uh, in our resources we have everything that looks fine so now if I press play you can see that I start the game empty-handed I have nothing in my inventory if I pass my picker I automatically pick my weapon uh, you can see that the icon in the top right corner is still the one from the AK because we didn't create one for it but uh, it is just right there I can unequip my weapon if I select it you can see it is the tutorial gun with the long description and so on I can equip it again and if I pass on my ammo I don't get any ammo and that is because that is because I probably made a mistake somewhere uh, that is because our weapon uh, tutorial gun. these names are not easy to read yeah I forgot to put the ammo ID uh, which would be which would be the one found right here so that is tutorial ammo so if I go back to my weapon ammo ID press play again sorry about that I can now shoot and as you can see when I shoot I consume ammo I'm gonna try to empty this because we went through all that trouble so uh, now wow, that, that is really a nice feature unity being able to zoom like that very useful um so i can shoot pretty much everywhere i drop and that's it i emptied my gun i don't have ammo anymore So yeah, if you made it this far, you now have a weapon that shoots your own projectiles that you can store in your own inventory and uh, you can switch to other weapons and switch back to yours. And it it is really the start of uh, a lot of fun. The weapon system in the engine is actually quite powerful and will let you create all sorts of weapons. We've seen how to create uh, a projectile weapon in this tutorial we saw how to create a melee one in uh, the animation tutorial and it's not even uh, the end of it i suggest if you're interested in weapons that you have a look at uh, the weapons documentation that i have right here and as you can see it contains a lot of stuff so we've seen how the character handle weapon works uh, we've seen weapon classes projectile weapon melee weapons uh, you'll find an example to create in details uh, a melee weapon we've been over I think uh, in details over the projectile weapons and the projectiles uh, timing something I, I think I didn't mention that much but uh, if we select our tutorial gun in the projectile weapon right here you can see that you can define a number of things like the delay before use so that would be a time between the moment where you press the trigger and the moment the weapon gets actually used uh, you can have that being interruptible or not so uh, if uh, you decide that it is interruptible if you release the button then uh, the shot won't happen uh, think of it like the charge in Mega Man maybe uh, we can have magazines as well so you could decide that uh, you you need to reload your gun uh, like I collected 50 bullets for this AK but uh, my magazine could only be maybe 10 and then I need to reload and what happens when you reload so there's a lot of stuff like that um, if we go back to the documentation uh, there are also combo weapons uh, I suggest you look at uh, the two sword examples that are included in the engine one is in the Koala 2D demo scene and the other one is in uh, the minimal sword 3D demo scene you can also have laser sight uh, I think pretty much every weapon in the Loft 3D demo have this uh, definitely the ones from the enemies uh, weapon aim we've seen that ammo we've covered it uh, inventory as well weapon IK so that would be uh, specific to 3D and that lets you uh, you know connect your hands to your gun and you can see an example of that in the Loft 3D demo scene and uh, ammo display would be 
that thing in the corner here so uh, of course you can reskin that to whatever you want um, thank you for following that tutorial uh, sorry about the tiny mistakes here and there but this is all very improvised um, I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you next time bye